My apologies to Craig. Given the way I teased this last segment, I didn't realize that you had you made such progress in your life of blocking this stuff out. No, it's all right. But uh, just Darren Ravel. Yeah, but uh, Johnny Manziel, who to me is it's it's one of the saddest stories in the history of sports. You know how good he was and how you know. And I don't know, like I don't know if he would have been a good NFL player. You know, I don't, I don't consider it sad though. I mean, I consider it sad if you're a fan of Johnny, but I consider it just one of thousands of just cautionary tales. Yeah. You know, I don't feel bad for him because uh, he had the world by the you know what, yeah. and that was never to be expected. I mean, he did not come in as some highly heralded dude. A and M was not expecting him to turn into what he turned into. Like mm-hmm. that, someone, whoever they can say what they want, they did not expect Johnny Mania like it turned into. That was like. That was one of the more unique college football seasons ever, just the way he kind of took over the world and the, all the attention that he got on the way to winning the Heisman. So it's, it's a cautionary tale, I think, if anything. But, you know, he, he ultimately dug his, his own grave. But uh, sounds like he made some money while doing it. That's, so that's good. Yeah. That's good. Well, and this kind of I – think, I think Johnny Manziel – might be the reason that the NCAA and it may, you know, now nine years overdue, but at that time should have said like, how do we get a handle on, we can't control name image and likeness yeah, anymore. They like, should have. They, the, they, these guys had. are like Johnny Manziel was a legit celebrity. Yeah. Like he was. he wasn't just a college football player that college football fans do. People just knew him because, and it was because of social media. Like he exploded. They couldn't spell his last name, but they knew who Johnny football was. Yeah, exactly. They had all, all of that. And uh, he he said on a on, on Barstool Sports Bussin' with the Boys podcast uh, that while he was at Texas A and M, he, he had two different transactions in 2013 that netted him thirty three thousand dollars. We're doing it all sneaky. We don't want to get caught. We're trying to learn from everybody else who's got caught. And I may or may not have gone back to this guy's condo and signed ten thousand pieces. Probably he gave me three grand. He said another individual approached him during the autograph signing session and told him he was getting ripped off before offering to connect him with another man who would pay him $30,000. And he's like, so this guy's like, okay, all right, go to this room of the fountain blue. All this stuff will be in there laid out. And when you're done, just send me a picture of it all. I'll give you the code of the safe and the money will be in there. And so he said, I made somewhat of a decent living in college. Who then dared the, he then dared the NCAA to take away his bleeping nine and four season away in my chick filet bowl against duke um he was investigated but no evidence that he'd done anything uh, and he said he never took a dollar after he won the high until after he won the heisman well of course not but until he won the heisman nobody would have really paid for yeah it, why you would know? you so, care about johnny manziel's autograph yeah yeah so um and he was suspended for their season opener that year because he'd violated but blah 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 um but but yeah i think in a weird way like johnny manziel might have started this uh like really like a deep look on how you have to deal with name, image, and likeness. Because with social media and the way that it exploded, like the NCAA should have then been like, look, we, we probably can't control this. We need to find a way to, to channel it. Well, I mean, Paul, we're talking, I mean, we, yeah. we talk in circles about what the NCAA should do, but yeah. we all know they're, they're boneheaded idiots who uh, wait to the last minute to try to do anything. And uh, evidence being that, you know, we're five years into the Baylor story and, and sometime in the next three weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Sometime in the next three weeks, they're expected to make some announcement. We can say that. Mm-hmm. If they, if they haven't announced anything by July 1st, then I might drive up to the freaking headquarters and just start going to town because this is ridiculous. They're, they're a goofy organization. I don't know what Mark Emmert does. Like, describe his job to me. What does he actually do? I don't know. He does a press conference on occasion where he really says nothing at all. Every time this name, image, likeness thing comes up, well, the NCAA is meeting. What comes out of it? A whole lot of nothing. Uh, they have meetings to do nothing. And, you know, Matt Carotes, uh, I mean, he's been on talking about, like, you know, well, there's discussion, there's discussion, there's discussion. But that's the problem with the NCAA. All they do is talk. They don't actually do anything, though. They've had name, image, likeness out here for years now. And before it was even a thing, yeah, they probably should have seen a Johnny Football, an Adrian Peterson, a Matt Leinart, a Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush! He was way before Johnny. That was enough to tell you. SMU was enough to tell you. So, like, the NCAA has no excuses in any way, shape, or form for any of the stuff going on right now. They only have themselves to blame for being so behind the ball because either they're not an outfit that is ready to conduct business the way that they're supposed to be conducting business because I don't know what business they actually conduct, 
And it's just, it's, it's a joke, man. It's, it's an absolute joke the way that uh, they've just let this stuff build and build and build and build. And now there's this atomic, like, it's like being told if you're America, hey, North Korea is building an atomic bomb. We know they are. And in eight years when it's finished, they are going to drop it on America. Like, no doubts, we know this. And then one year goes by, hey, you getting ready for that atomic bomb? Now we got seven years left, man. And then four years, no, we still got three years to go. All of a sudden, the plane doors open, and you're just like, uh, well, you had seven years to prepare for this. You did nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's built and built and built. And now the outside world's ready to drop this big bomb on the NCAA, and they can't say they didn't see it coming. They can't say that they're surprised by it. All of this has been laid out now. Like, I, I'm really not even joking when I say I feel like we could get in this room, the four of us in this room, and be more proactive than the NCAA. Yeah. Like, how hard would that be? Because I honestly don't know what they do. And I know there are other cases than, than Baylor that are going on right now. But And I know that they're shorthanded and all that. But give me a break, dude. Like, th I, I just – I have no faith. I have no faith in that organization to uh, to do anything anymore. I know they can still deliver a penalty. Hell, they might, you know – slap a heavy one or a light one we don't know on baylor here in, in the next month or so but um all i know is, is i don't respect the organization and, and i don't really know what they've done anytime lately to make anybody feel good about them being the ones that are in charge of college athletics yeah and look if johnny manzel who look in am i know they they have a big fan base but well, I'm, an but, fan. I'm pissed but, that he said this, by yeah, the way, because yeah, yeah, yeah. now they could, in theory, the NCAA could open an investigation yeah. because of what he said, but I'm, I'm sure but that it's they... Nine, it's nine years ago. I mean, like, well, you know... There's like, a statute of limitations. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that who works. Knows. But, but bottom line is, like, you know, if Johnny Manziel can make $30,000 in the drop of a hat, like you mentioned, like, what can the... Like, Adrian Peterson's a much bigger star than Johnny Manziel. You know, yeah. like, there's like guys who, you know, like you knew Adrian Peterson was going to be a stud in the NFL. Why not, you know, buy autographs from him when it's going to be cheaper than it is, you know, when he's, you know, a, 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 you know, an all pro, you know, you just kind of some guys, you know, so like the, the, how I, about this? How about we set up autograph sessions where the players get 10 bucks an autograph and they can sign as many as they want to with the yeah. school sitting there watching. Yeah. Problem solved. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Not saying give them a thousand bucks per autograph, but like at these at these signing sessions, if you want to do that, like I, I don't think you would do it for like the spring game. I don't because then you know every player is charging two bucks or something, and you spend a thousand dollars to get some walk on autographs and and the star quarterback. Like nobody would want to do that, and that wouldn't be real fair to the fans. But you know, I, I've. The more the incident boy has fought this and put this off, the more it opens my mind to the extreme happening and to all of a sudden Baylor putting out a graphic where like, hey, this Saturday, March 13th, come out and meet Zach Pyron and Treston Ebner and they'll be at Big Red Motors. Oh, that's the Oklahoma. Adrian Peterson's yeah. got me on the mic. Brett Bomar. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though? And like, and then it's just all out in the open, five bucks per autograph or whatever. Like, Well, look, Johnny in 2012 for... Ten thousand got thirty thousand, so he was getting that was three bucks. Yeah, he was dealing with some like inside autograph. But I mean, he would sell so like though, yeah. ten dollars an autograph if you got an. I mean, you do a couple I of those. I don't know why anybody would be opposed to that though. Like, if a player was making money, like, I just don't think people wanted to get to the point where there is like these big businesses that are like in charge of the autographs. All like, I think if you were to do it more of like an amateur type of way, where they still get money, but it's not like real corporate. Like, I think that's what they're trying the to avoid. You, I think the last thing you'd want if you're an athletic department is some organization coming in and being... He's got uh, an agreement with your quarterback to do he, these business because, dealings. And, because then, like, he's got the agreement. So, like, okay, after film study on Wednesday... No, sorry. I got to... You, you, you got to... Like, I can't go do this. I've got yeah. to sign, you know, 5,000 footballs because I've got this contract. Um, you know, it's... Um, anyway, the overall but, point is the NCAA is, is just... Yeah. But, yes... Yeah. But yeah, Johnny Mantell, who, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised by that story. No. I think he's he, he could have said he could have put a one in front of that three, and I wouldn't have been surprised by that either. Um, you know, I'd be pissed, like I said, if I was an A and M fan, just because of what you know. Maybe somebody from the NCAA sees that and decides, hey, maybe we need to look into that further because I guarantee he's not the only player that's doing that, and it's not the only team that's doing that either. So this is like the biggest duh of 
you know, college football, I think we're just gobsmacked by the fact that he actually admitted it out in the open because that's that's the thing. Like, even Eric Dickerson doesn't really talk. Uh, oh, he didn't talk a word about it. Yeah, and it's, mean, uh, it's like five decades later. So it's the fact that Johnny just came out and said it like that is is what's kind of surprising. But nobody's surprised by the fact that it actually happened. And, and, and it was rumored. And I do remember the Ravel stuff about him getting paid for autographs and all of that. So, yeah, it's, it's not surprising, but, um, yeah, I mean, maybe that's one way you compensate the athletes is through those autograph signings. I mean, there's so many things you could have already come up with. Like, there's so many things you could have already thought of and been ahead of this all, and instead, again, they just sat on their hands. And, and I, I know that there are people there that are working hard and doing their jobs and are looking into what they're supposed to be looking into, but, like, man, think about the but last time they actually job- did – but maybe their job is wrong. Right. Like maybe, maybe it's it a is. pointless job. Like, but like, tell me, what do they do? Yeah. Like, what like, do they do? P- part of me thinks that like what the NCAA does is essentially typewriter maintenance. Yes, they like, just like, they rake the, in like, cash. Like, no, That's like, all they do. Like, no, like, like, there's no typewriters anymore. But they're still like they're still repairing them. You know, they're still doing right. it. Like, it's it's like they're past, and then they keep they keep waiting for like nobody's gonna want to stop all of a sudden making money when they could. No, like no, like like that sentiment was around. Like I remember Chris Weber being pissed about it when he was at Michigan. It was thirty years ago, mm-hmm. you know, almost. And so, uh, so he was mad about it then that he could walk past and see it, you know, a Michigan two jersey in the window of a store, and he's not getting any of that. Like who's that? That's him. That's him. He may not have his name on the back, but he's number two on Michigan. It's popular because of him. It's not a, a logical jump, you know, to to make that and. And, you know, back then, you know, you, you think like, oh, eventually they're just going to, they're going to see our, our way to this and know that it's better. No. No. no I, I think ultimately, man, the NCAA doesn't really know what they're doing. I, mean, I know, like, they, they host tournaments and they reel in money and, and that kind of stuff. I know there's stuff they actually do, but, like, on the surface, we see none of it. We have no yeah. idea. Like, no one has a clue what they actually do um, other than just slap their name on things and take money. Yep. And, and dish out punishments. Like, that's my... That's my entire knowledge of the NCAA, basically. But, no, I mean, bottom line is is they procrastinated, and now there's a big nuke that's sitting right in front of them threatening to blow up the entire thing, and uh, the timer is counting down, and their response is just sit and watch it and see what happens and whether it explodes or not and yeah. not try to even deep, you know, deep uh, or whatever, try to even, you know, switch the wires to turn it off yeah. or, you know, whatever. I can't think of the right word, but... Um, yeah, they're just sitting watching the bomb tick down and, and hoping that it doesn't blow up when it hits all zeros. And I don't know that's a really good strategy.